All right, we are here with Nicole Strafacci at M Gallery's PNA for embroidered pedicures. Hi, Nicole. Hello, Frank, and thanks everyone for coming and uh, for listening. Yes, thank you. Thank you for listening to us and watching. Uh, so, yeah, let's just jump right into the exhibition. Kind of a wild departure of uh, what I know from you in the past. Like the sculptural works are quite phenomenal. So let's go into the uh, why dolls. Um, so I uh, first of all, there's a um, a certain emotional connection with my work that's always been very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's something about creating uh, uh, these like creatures, mm. um, little like art doll, like sculptural pieces um, and creating their personalities um, that, um, I don't know, there's, it, it seems like it, it takes that level of connecting to your artwork to another another level like mm -hmm. um because in the past i've done uh two-dimensional collage pieces right. and then these are actual forms and creatures so it's like almost like creating another like body that you can relate with and uh -huh, have an yeah. emotional connection with right um yeah uh, uh it's funny actually that we're starting with this one aunt rose because it's actually the most abstract piece in the show right um uh, this inter interesting thing about making dolls is that hopefully I won't say um too much. <laughs> um, I'm starting right. off with a lot of ums, but as I know, I'll be fewer. less nervous. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I found, I remember like about a year ago, I was making dolls again. I hadn't made them seriously, a large body of them since two the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and then I sort of meddled in it a little bit in it over the years, and then I made some about a year ago, and they were very abstract. Mm -hmm. They were more like just sculptural fabric pieces. So I realized that if I wanted that connection with them, there had to be like um, some kind of human element to mm -hmm. connect with, mm -hmm. like eyes, you know, something that represented a, like a soul and a spirit. So, um, I think this one has it in a way on a very abstract level. I mean, there's like her ears and her legs and she's got a little mouth mm -hmm. in an unusual right, place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mouth, right. <laughs> well, my, my fr it's, it's funny you bring that up because the, my first interaction with these was sitting on your couch for your birthday. Oh, right. Where I came over and there, that wonderful like just that interactive component where I lifted it up and this the one of the I forget which piece it was but it was quite phenomenal it's very odd to and the, the physicality of it is also very interesting so and that's I, I remember and I, I love the the way you produce these and think about them yeah thank you that was those so those were dolls that I had made in the early 2000s that was like a couple of years ago that, that you saw those I think mm -hmm. um and they, um, that's, that's interesting. They're, so, the, the, you're talking about the physicality of them. So the larger, yeah. that sort of brings me to the scale in my work. I've mm -hmm. always, a lot of these dolls are smaller. Um, and it's interesting that I sort of went big with them, with a couple of them that I'll be showing today. Um, and it was a whole other, relationship in a way mm -hmm. because it was sort of like um it was almost like a mirror kind of when you make right. them larger mm -hmm. it's sort of like this confrontation with an, another person in a way because mm -hmm. it's more along this same scale as your like yeah. a human but like full-grown human body than right. this little sort of baby creature that you're holding in your hands you know mm -hmm. um I mean, there's also the whole thing with dolls, right? Dolls have, there's so much history connected to dolls, like so much, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Baggage or preconceived yeah. notions of what mm. a doll is. Mm. A doll is like a childhood toy. A doll is, um, yeah, I mean, it, there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's like you want to like touch them, I think, 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people, I, I found people touching them at the opening, actually, mm-hmm. almost. And, I, and are you okay? I was okay with that. Not too much. One, one of them was my mom, actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, like, that was like sort of a lot of other things related to right, it. Like, right. There was a lot of mixed emotions around that. But um, uh, that it's one of the reasons I put hooks on the back of them mm-hmm. so that I could um, hang them on the wall and that right. they were like, it sort of elevated the whole idea of a doll into um, like a sculptural piece. Yeah, a relief, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some people call them art doll sculptures. It's kind of hard to put them in a category, I find, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's just my work. Well, being that, uh, well, what are the what are the differences do you feel between your, your 2D work and this 3D work? Um, well, there's, mm, I think that the the, I mean, it's definitely related. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do a lot of collage work in my um, in my uh, two dimensional work also. So, uh, the fabric pieces, I mean, I use a lot of fabric collage in my work. Um, there's a lot of, I, I think the biggest difference, honestly, is the sort of tactile quality that these have versus a more cerebral quality in my two-dimensional work. I mean, really, when I think about the biggest difference, obviously, it's the medium. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, the process was so completely opposite. Yeah. And um, I made these pieces, this is kind of getting into a question further down the line mm-hmm. in, the, in, in, the, um, in our talk here, but I made these pieces at a time when um, like, I was still settling into a new apartment that I moved into in December, so that was going on. And then COVID-19, the things started opening up and it was springtime and and um, everyone wanted to be outside seeing their friends and, and getting out in the world again and I had mixed feelings about that because I was so locked in for so long that I had to sort of ease into that but I also had this show coming up and I the last thing I wanted to do was be in my mental head like mm-hmm. thinking about what I was going to make. Yeah. I remember that conversation, we had that conversation about how I was like, I feel very strange about not wanting to open up, you know, and like that, the, like the opening up was like somehow traumatic, you know, yeah. like the end of it was traumatic, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think I can see that. Whole, sorry. Yeah, you know, I can I can see how that that made sense to me when when we had that conversation about it. Yeah, I mean, um, so the process. So I normally I keep like a notebook with like ideas in it, and it's not like I didn't keep one now, but I refer to it a lot less. And I just started, um, I'll get into some of the things that influenced this work later, but I just started, there are, uh, many of them are heavily hand embroidered. And Anne Rose is, her mouth is completely hand embroidered here with also, um, I got really into using Posca pens actually, which are water-based mm-hmm. um, paint markers. Um, they're really nice because you can blend them in a way that you can't with regular like fabric markers. You can water them down. You can you can blend the color. Um, so a combination of that and a lot of hand stitching all at the top too. There was something I I never understood the repetitious process that people said that was so wonderful for them. I, to me, it sounded boring, like mm-hmm. going in and out of fabric or going over and over like the same activity to create a piece of art but I understood it when I made these pieces because that's like like I feel like the stitching created the pieces mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. whereas like my 2d work is, was much more I was much more in my head when I was creating it I feel like there, there's a certain joy in these pieces that I haven't had in a lot of abundance in my earlier work and I think it's because I was in my process further versus like in my mental head, like worrying about, not worrying necessarily, but I, I, I don't know. Well, I think that's probably clear sure. right now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm still sort of going over it in my head because it was a completely new experience for me. So mm. oh, yeah, for sure. to be in process like that and mm. really like loving the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, the physicality of it. Yeah. The physicality versus mm. what I was saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the physicality and the, and the tactile, physical, like process actually revealed what I wanted to say. Yeah. 
you know, that duality of sculpture and painting right. is, I, I, I love thinking about how like painting is this, for me, it, there's like, it's a difference between presence and absence. You know, there's, in painting, uh, you're looking into a viewing screen, so there's this absence there, you know, you're going into a space. But when you do deal with sculpture in three dimension, it's very present. You know, the presence is there, like, you can't help but deny that it's in your space, like, that's... Oh, that's really great. Yeah, so I think that that's, that seems to be, looking at your work with the 2D versus 3D, you know, that you're, it's not like you're not creating this, you know, other world, you're like, you're dealing with this one directly. Right, and maybe that's also why it was so joyous for me, too, because I was in the moment. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, I also, you know, obviously I, sh I should actually talk about that, like, flat surface versus two dimensional and these are these I see them as these unique personalities that I've created here. Mm -hmm. So I'm turning them, right, to create them. I mean a lot of them have I mean this one not so much just the hook, mm -hmm. but some of them, yeah. I'll get into it later, have like a lot of the earlier dolls dolls, because I didn't know exactly how I was gonna present them. Mm -hmm. And I just got into it. I are heavily embroidered on the backs also. Yeah, yeah. So that's something you can't do with the painting, right? right? You, you work, you look, work in the you round. Can't, you're not designing all sides of it. You're not looking mm -hmm. at it in space. Indeed. You're just looking at, you know, a scanned image in your computer that you print. Like, your show, it's just, it's really easy to also to show it to someone in a print versus like a two, like a three dimensional sculpture. Indeed. I think either has to be shown in the video or in person. Mm. So, but yeah, the physicality of like sort of moving it around, like looking at it from different angles, stepping back from it, getting mm. closer, like it's very different. I mean, even with the small piece, like in painting, you have to do that if it's larger scale, but even with the small piece, you're, there's more spatial stuff going on mm. yeah. in sculpture than there is in painting. Mm -hmm. And they are sculptures, really. They're, they're my doll sculptures, like creature sculptures. I don't know. I, I, I'm having trouble <laughs> do defining define exactly what they are. Right. That's a wonderful space to be, though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It reminds me of that um, the story about it was Duchamp and Calder. Like Calder, when he was doing his mobiles, he's like, "Hey, Duchamp, I don't know what to call these things." He had no name for it. And Duchamp's like, well, you should call them mobiles because they're mobile. <laughs> so oh, right. and that's that's why we call it that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like that's so it's, that's very Calder, you know, and, and playful like that. It's, it's yeah, I mean, I think the people that are curious will ask too. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, like you don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, so. indeed. All right. Yeah, that's oh. cool though. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. You want to move on to Queen Moldy here? Queen Moldy yeah. and her glorious Yomi. Yes. <laughs> Okay, she's over here. Um, I'm abandoning Naked Nelly over here. I kind of wanted to talk <laughs> about her too. But, um, uh, I just want to show this one thing. So yeah, we, sure, of course. Naked Nelly has her name on the back of her, actually. <laughs> um, so the earlier dolls, this was an earlier one, had their names embroidered on the backs of mm -hmm. them. And I got into this sort of alliteration thing with a couple of the early ones. I don't know. It just this is kind of going into the question, the titling question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure what that was about, but I, I think <laughs> it was the joy of creating them, like what I was talking about. That they got these sort of really whimsical titles. Yeah. And, that, and, and it just sort of came to me in a flash. I didn't think about it very much. It usually came to me when I was completing it or near completion. And some of them actually got their names on them, on the back. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but anyway, let's move on to... Uh, yeah, because your titles are so... <laughs>